It's Nolan. Yeah, money get murdered, that's all the young niggas worship Rent new one the first, so they mama can't make a purchase Badder than bruise, pops, drink liquor, cop in the attitude Stuck in perpetual struggle, life with no gratitude The first lesson, Jesus, obsessed with seasons The pastor told me to check Ephesians Accept the readings from niggas that's probably living more foul than conditions I'm from Bible said my flesh is a curse, so what's the outcome? Running with my homies, half-stepping on my dean Couple feet away from niggas sipping lean, trying to keep it clean I'm in the kitchen flipping quesadillas on a skillet I taught myself life lessons, it ain't take a village History showed us how they rape and pillage Mystery shows, television killers I'm hearing stories of people losing their homes Taking loans, cause they work for the government Shit is wrong, let their faces be known Niggas spying with drones Thugs bringing they chrome to clan Rocking they hoods, nobody tapping they phones I'm tired of cold cases, young kids Early ages, whole culture, co-signing rapists Shit is outrageous, got me closing the pages And my brows are like we raising cowards The more we fall into the system We just wasting power, so many people People place value on what you make per hour Feel like I'm preaching to the choir Should I sing it louder? These niggas got us twisted Falling in mischief I heard the streets calling I make my numbers unlisted Tired of dwelling on wishing I'm falling in the submission Of signing petitions We're losing a war of attrition What's going on beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry Your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns Hope everyone is doing well Please, please, please on your way in Please make sure that you're liking the video. If you want to take it a step further with the support, be sure to share the video. I've seen some people that say, hey, Nolan, you deserve more views. You need more love out here in the streets. Well, a surefire way to ensure that we get more views on the channel, on the content is if you share it, whether that be on the Twitters, if you're on there, if you're on the Facebooks, which is easy to share on, or if you're on Instagram, be sure to share it in your story. You know what I'm saying? Just a quick little something. It ain't got to be all crazy. You ain't even got to put my face on it. So nobody be like, who that nigga you promoting? Who the fuck? You ain't got to do all that. Just a little quick like, a share, send it to a friend, you know, send it to somebody in an email, whatever it is, man. Say, hey, I think you would like this. I think you would love this channel. You know what I mean? Um, we're on that we're on that race to get to 15K anyway, so any help to get us in that direction would be greatly appreciated. Um, and that's just that on that, you know what I'm saying? Just wanted to go ahead and put that disclaimer out there. Once again, uh, much love and respect to everybody that supports the channel, supports me as a content creator, as an artist, and all of those different things. Big Dog is out now. Now, let's get into uh, why we're here. Uh, we've got another alleged Diddy victim coming out, speaking on her experience with the rapper. Well, I won't even call him a rapper because he ain't no goddamn rapper to me. With Let's just call him former media mogul. OK, um, we've got this young lady by the name of. Well, I don't even want to call a young lady. She's probably older than me at this point. Uh, Miss Talia Graves. OK, and she's coming out claiming that not only did Diddy do her wrong in a sexual manner, but his head of security also did her wrong. Now, I don't know who his head of security was in the year of 2001 when this incident took place, but I would believe uh, Gene Deal, you're going to have to come out and answer to this, sir. I don't know if you was the head of security, but you was around. You've been coming out telling all the stories. You've been talking about all the shit from Biggie to Tupac to Cassie to this one to that one to Misa. You know what I'm saying? You said you you witnessed Diddy smack his mama. What you know about this girl? Okay? Because somebody on your team took part in this. And I also believe that you've come, you've come out and spoke on intimate details of witnessing some of Diddy's sexual encounters. I'm not saying that they were forceful that you witnessed, but you were apparently there. You said that Diddy allegedly slept with somebody of note's uh, wife. And you said you saw Usher walk up and, and knock on the door in the room. She opens the door and Usher kissed her in the mouth. So you've seen enough. I would love to know what you've seen when it comes to people on your side, security. Let's keep going, though. So they say hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs and his former bodyguard allegedly drugged, bound and violently essayed a woman in 2001 in a vicious attack he filmed and to and showed to friends a bombshell new lawsuit claims 
Miss Talia Graves sobbed and said she is happy the hip hop mogul is behind bars during a press conference today announcing this legal action. She says it's a pain that goes through goes to the very core of who you are, leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Some of the hardest parts of, of this pain are the shame and the guilt I have experienced that plays a negative part in my day to day ability to be able to function properly. OK. In court papers, Graves accused Combs and ex-security head Joseph Sherman. What you know about Joseph Sherman, Gene? Roger Bonds, what y'all know? Of mercilessly SAing her inside of the Bad Boy Records studio located in Manhattan. The two men lured Graves, who was 25 at the time, and dating one of Diddy's employees, lured her into the studio where they gave her a drink laced with a drug that caused her to briefly lose consciousness. Graves awoke to find herself bound and restrained before the duo proceeded to S.A. her and violate her, the court papers claim. During this horrific incident, Sherman forcefully slammed her onto a table and slapped her and roughly forced her to perform a sexual act, the filing claims. Both men were undeterred by her cries for help throughout this attack. Furthermore, they state Miss Graves never recovered and her emotional wounds were reopened on the date of November 27, 2023, when she discovered her attackers made a video that they showed to multiple men seeking to publicly degrade and humiliate both Graves and her boyfriend. Now, what I find interesting is Diddy was showing people 2001 clips in November 27th of 2023. 22 years later, he's showing people that footage. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't. I would just love to know how you can corroborate that in, in evidence. They say she was so distraught over this discovery that she sunk into a deep depression and considered unaliving herself, which was not the first time she considered. OK, OK. Graves, who now lives in Texas, never reported the depraved attack to police out of fear that Combs would use his power as a hip hop industry kingmaker to ruin her life, says the suit filed in Manhattan federal court. However, she did decide to go public with her claim soon after Combs September 16th arrest on federal charges of racketeering and trafficking. OK. Uh, she says being blamed, questioned and threatened has oftentimes made her feel worthless, isolated and sometimes responsible for what happened. OK, now, I don't know in particular who was blaming, questioning or threatening her. Perhaps it was the boyfriend. I don't know if he knew um, or perhaps it was Diddy harassing her over the years. Excuse me. I don't know. OK. She says um, all of this while wiping her eyes with a tissue, as y'all saw in the thumbnail. She explained that at the time of the assault, she was going through a divorce. And so she did not get the support that she needed. And ever since she has struggled in her love life, often ending up in abusive relationships. She has experienced chronic pain and sexual discomfort since this alleged attack. The incident left her with post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and anxiety and she endures flashbacks, nightmares, and intrusive thoughts. She says she is emotionally scarred. She says, I'm glad that Combs is locked up, but that is a temporary feeling of relief. In her suit, Graves is asking for a judge to issue an injunction, ordering the video to be destroyed and permanently barring anyone from distributing it again. She is also seeking unspecified damages. In addition to Combs and Sherman, the suit names Combs record companies claiming they aided and abetted the two men, including by providing them the studio space where they committed this act. Her lawyer, Gloria Allred, sitting beside Graves during this press conference, said we want justice for her and we are looking forward to winning it. It is long overdue for those who have caused her to suffer to be held accountable. Allred declined to comment on whether Graves had been in touch with federal prosecutors currently probing trafficking charges against Combs. But the lawyer did confirm she is representing other alleged victims of Combs, noting that Graves case is the first suit her firm has mounted against him. Allred has declined to give any further details about potential additional lawsuits. 
So far, Combs has pled not guilty to charges that he served as the ruthless kingpin of a criminal empire that abused women for decades, including by forcing them to have sexual encounters with male prostitutes that he called freak offs. Allred said the arrest of Combs has been a very stressful and anxiety producing experience and Graves has lived with all of it for many years and is relieving it now. Sherman and a spokesman for Combs both didn't immediately return a request a request, excuse me, for comment on this matter. OK. Now, as I stated, there is a press conference and we will play some of the footage from the press conference. You all can let me know how you feel um, in connection to this, you know, and I think it will produce mixed feelings within, you know, those in the viewers, because some people will automatically understand and feel for her. Uh, some people will question the validity of this of this claim. And I kind of understand both sides of it. I mean, but but we always want to be sensitive with victims, hear them out and. I'm going to be honest. My instinct is to believe victims first. If it comes out that they lie in later, then we can address that. So first off, we're going to play Miss Talia Graves uh, recounting her experience. And then we're going to have her lawyer, Miss Allred, answering questions from the press. OK, cool. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by and during the assault. It's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Some of the hardest parts of this pain are the shame and the guilt I have experienced that plays a negative part in my day-to-day -day ability to function properly being blamed, questioned, and threatened has often made me feel worthless, isolated, and sometimes responsible for what happened to me. My family issues made the pain even worse. I was already going through a divorce at the time of the assault and did not get the support that I needed. I was also faced with disbelief and judgment. This has put a strain on my selection of men and relationships. But many relationships became aggressive and abusive, which has made me feel even more alone in my struggles. I go through spells of being distant and withdrawn that it's sometimes so hard to leave my house. The trauma of the assault has taken a toll on my mental health I've had PTSD, depression, and anxiety. I'm emotionally scarred. It has been hard for me to trust others, to form healthy relationships, or even feel safe in my own skin. Flashbacks, nightmares, and intrusive thoughts make me feel like 
It's a constant struggle. I also suffer with physical problems such as chronic pain, sexual discomfort, the violation I have experienced during the assault has had lasting effects on my body, causing ongoing health problems and complications. The combination of physical and emotional pain has created a cycle of suffering from which it is so hard to break free. I want to continue on this journey towards recovery and healing. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. <clears throat> Dahlia is not going to be taking any questions, but I'll be happy to take some questions. Would you please speak up? It's hard to hear you. Yes, sorry, I'm not sure. I'm a bit short. Uh, in the complaint, uh, you noted that your client learned about this video in November 2023. That is around the time of the first public lawsuit, at least, against Sean Combs um, from his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. I'm curious how you and your client learned about the existence of this video. You're saying that this incident occur is alleged to have occurred about the time of another lawsuit having been filed. I can't, um, I'm sorry, per, I can't understand your question. Per the complaint, uh, this uh, alleged incident occurred in 2001, but your client learned about the existence of the video in 2023, more than 20 years after. I'm curious how she learned about the existence of that video. Yeah, we have, so the question is, she alleges that the incident took place in 2001, but you are saying that it is alleged in the complaint that was filed that she learned about it in 2022. And then the question is, how did she learn about it? We have no comment in response to that question. Gloria, has did he reach out to your client? Excuse me. Has Diddy reached out to your client? Question is, has Diddy reached out to her? We will not comment on that either. Gloria, um, I know this is very difficult for your clients, but would you, be able, would you be able to share a little bit of her background? Uh, where does she come from? Or what does she do? Can you give us some details about your client, please? No, I can't provide further details about where she came from or what she does. Gloria, to your knowledge, has any law enforcement agency reviewed this video for possible criminal charges? So is, is the question, has any criminal law enforcement, well, has, is the question, has any law enforcement agency viewed the video for possible criminal viewed charges? Viewed the video. I am not able to answer that question. Your client says that she was threatened after this alleged attack. Can you elaborate on those threats? Question is, can I elaborate on the allegation that she was threatened after the attacks? And no, because really I'm not able to comment on or expand upon any evidence or anything that might have evidentiary value at this time. Gloria, there's a, an allegation in the lawsuit that the video was made available for sale. Can you elaborate on that and was Mr. Combs really There's an to allegation you? that the video was made available to whom? For sale? For oh, that was made available for sale. That's new. There have been other accusers, um, other women, who have said that they believe they were filmed and that the videos were shared. But I think this might be the first uh, 
complaint allegation that the video was made available for sale somehow? I have not compared what we have alleged in the lawsuit to what others have previously alleged in their lawsuits. So I can't tell you whether this is the first that has alleged that this video was made available for sale or not. Would Mr. Combs be involved in that alleged sale? Yeah. There are no other details that we can provide so you filed in it? reference to the videos. So you filed it today? Yes, the lawsuit was filed this morning. And, and we have a case number, which I have provided, and we will pass around and provide my statement, which includes the case number. And this is part of the first page uh, of the complaint. So you want to stand up and focus? And there is a redaction on what we're showing you. So just to tell you. And to your right, please. This is right. the first page in part and redacted. Dahlia to your left, please. Pardon me? Dahlia on your right, and Gables can look this way. Thank you. Thank you. And right below here. Oh, okay. That's good. And one more this way, please. And I'll leave this on the table okay. afterwards. Gloria, um, there's a few networks here that uh, are Spanish speaking. We're wondering if your client might be able to give us statement. Okay, and speak Spanish? Yeah. I'm sorry. I... All right. So that is Miss Talia Graves, who is the um, accuser or the victim, we should say, and her attorney, Miss Gloria Allred. Now, as you can see, Miss uh, Miss Graves is tearing up throughout the entire endeavor, recounting her experience. Even while Miss Allred is taking questions, she's still tearing up. Um, but I gotta say, and this is with all due respect to Miss to Miss Graves, Miss Allred. You said that you would be happy to take any questions from the press. It did not seem as if you were happy to take any questions from the press because you had nothing of value to say to the questions. You said no comment for five mother effing minutes. What in the hell? How did she find out about the tape? No comment. We heard that it was for sale. When did she become aware of that? No comment. Oh, you say what? No comment. I can't give in. I can't speak to anything evidentiary. No comment. What y'all do the press conference for then? Now, I'm not going to act like I'm some sort of legal professional. I'm not going to act like I'm watching Law and Order every goddamn day. I'm not watching no legal channels. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, I don't watch court cases uh, very often for my own personal enjoyment or research purposes. So somebody please feel free to let me know. How often have you seen victims come out and do press conferences like this on the onset of them having a lawsuit filed? The the, the remember, they filed the lawsuit this morning. She just admitted that much. And by the afternoon, they were already doing a press conference. So at the at the entry of this lawsuit being a thing, they're doing an interview the same day. Again, I don't want to go against Miss Graves' story, but I do feel like I may be against Miss Gloria Allred's uh, tactics. I do feel like she is using this for Supreme Press. She says that she's representing other victims of Diddy. So she's taking come one, come all. So if Miss uh, Graves is Diddy's 11th 
lawsuit, 11th victim accuser. I can only imagine how many more she has up her sleeve because she says that she's got others in the article that I just read before we played video. We may get up to 15, 20 people. And maybe 10 of them might be represented by this woman or probably employing same or similar tactics. Again, why would you bring her to the public to answer questions when you know you can't answer no goddamn questions? We're not here to talk about, you know, where she works. We're not here to talk about makeup tutorials. We're not here to talk about what type of food she likes. You know, like we're here to get to the bottom of the situation. And I understand that it is an ongoing thing. It's a brand new lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we've got a man in jail who's being investigated for, for crimes of, of similar and same nature. But how do you think this makes your client look to the public when you're not being forthcoming with information? You've got a you've got a list full of allegations in your lawsuit and you can't even answer questions regarding the lawsuit. You can't even confirm the the claims made in your own filing. How does that make your client look? Again, that's the only thing that I've got that I've taken umbrage with at this particular time is the way that the lawyer is positioning this. You are making us distrust you and your client because it seems that you've got something to hide. And in this instance, the only person that should have something to hide would be Diddy and his former head of security who allegedly violated this woman, filmed their violation of this woman. And as of November of last year, we're still showing people the videos that they took of her 22 now, almost 23 years ago. I would think Diddy would have a lot more recent archives that he would be showing off to people if that's what he wanted to do. But let's just say for the sake of conversation and, and for the sake of believing what you all are alleging that he did, you can't tell nobody how she found out the information. Is that to protect her? Cause I would think trying to protect her identity. You know what I'm saying? We've seen people come out and put out Jane Doe lawsuits against Diddy for protection. You threw her out the same day it was filed. She don't reside in New York no more. Y'all don't, don't reveal she live in Texas. Like, I don't see the protection here. Only protection I'm, I'm receiving is we can't say shit. No comment. I, I don't know. This makes it this makes it very hard to uh, fully support. I support the victim. But it's hard to support the case. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Like. This is, this is where shit gets a little tricky. This is where shit gets weird. And I told y'all, this shit is about to get messy. It's, it's getting messy. It's messy already. But every passing day up until we get the trial, up until a final verdict of guilty or not guilty is, is found by the judge, this shit is going to be a fucking headache. It's going to be a thorn in not only my side, but your side as viewers, because I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to keep reporting because this is... The biggest high profile case we've gotten in a, in a while, highest profile case we're probably going to get in a while. I know there's people out there that are just waiting, salivating at the mouth to see what happens with Jay-Z. If, if and or when that happens, we'll address it. But right now, Diddy's under the gun. Diddy's under the gun. He's under the knife. He's under the needle. He's under all the shit. So we'll see how this thing goes. We'll see how the situation with Miss Graves goes, because I don't know how compelling this is. But if they can prove their claims, then hopefully she gets what she deserves um, in terms of damages. That's what I've got to offer on this particular story. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. All right. And I will catch you all on the next one. Much love and respect, y'all. Peace. Yeah.
King of my city in cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier rags. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they died of me, all of a sudden they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories, cross them out and came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble, I done came too far to be humble.